me and Christian just had a really solid chat and he told me something crazy. It's not something I ever suffer with nowadays. In this video, he shares some of his tips. I've done this so many times now, I've hit a bit of a wall, so you've got to climb over it. As well as some lessons he's learned over the years to start and finish new pieces. This is an important thing, writer's block, because the job is to write and if you can't, then we need to talk about different... So there's going to be a bunch of different things to talk about here. So what are we talking about today? Writer's block. Okay. Have you suffered from it? Yeah, yeah. Recently, what? recently. And, and what was it? Was it getting started? It was, I'd just finished a really big project and I felt like I'd given everything mm -hmm. to that project. So it felt like after that, I was either a one trick pony mm -hmm. doing the same thing and rehashing what I've already done, or I just had no inspiration for something new. Gotcha. Yeah. I... <sighs> I used to really suffer from it. I mean, I remember once having it so bad that I rang, rang up my girlfriend and, and, and was like bawling, crying. And she left me two weeks later. <laughs> and you like, showed a sign of weakness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's really interesting for me that you said one trick pony inspiration. Because I think that what is inspiration? And I wonder whether it's you surprising yourself. Mm. and it creating a spark and i wonder whether you surprising yourself is when you don't when you do something that doesn't sound like you yeah 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 and that's i find that curious um my wife says hello in a really beautiful way it's it's got this scottish tone she, it's like hello it's like it's like a question it goes up oh. yeah <laughs> and i would never ever want her to say hello any differently and I think that something that I do, I have done, is to go, well, I'm not a one-trick pony, but I've definitely got tricks. Mm. And what people are, certainly when people are commissioning you, what people want is you. It's good they've seen it. The other thing is, every kind of average or mediocre piece of music you write or song that you write, but finish gets you one closer to writing something less mediocre. I work with a couple of guys called Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. Top Inside guys. Money. Oh yeah, absolutely amazing. And uh, they were saying they, they write something every day and Reese said, even if it's shit, we've written something yeah. and there's something to work with. And that's the key. And I think that if, if I'm guilty of anything, it's procrastination. It's like not wanting to start. And I think it's just part of the, the process. Um, but I know if I just start something, I at least have something to work on. I have to say some of my most successful pieces of music have never really been from those moments of inspiration. And it's really, it's really interesting because it's like maybe the director really likes it and you go, oh, that old thing. And then suddenly <laughs> people be emailing going, I really like that. And yeah. It's like, oh, right. So that doesn't necessarily stimulate me. It doesn't surprise me. But they think it's good. I, I, I want to give you an example, actually, mm. is... One of the pieces of music I'm best known for, I think is eight seconds long. Right. Um, certainly in the UK, and it's this. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I can remember doing that, and basically I'd done a, uh, a theme tune for this series inside number nine, and I'd recorded live musicians, and it was in the dub. And they rang up and they said, it's just not, it's not working. It's not got the right, right vibe. And I was working on a film score at the time and I was trying, I'm crunching on a deadline. And I, I just literally had no time to do it. And you're, I'm t you know, we thought it would just do one series. You don't yeah. realise you're doing this franchise. And every time this theme, theme plays, my wife goes, because my wife likes this show, goes, that's such a brilliant theme. But I remember writing it and I'm not joking, it took two minutes. And, and, and it's not like two minutes to do something brilliant. It was just, so what it is, is, okay, that's, that, that's a drone that mm -hmm. I made for Murder Ex on the Orient Express for Poirot. No way. That pizzicato was a pizzicato I used on a series called Fresh Meat. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that as yeah. well. Yeah, and um, I worked out a way that if you, if you get, uh, solo strings pizzicatos and put them into a virtual guitar amp mm -hmm. they don't sound like those cheesy pizzicatos mm. that everyone was using in the early does it mortars. just give that bit of bite to it yeah just <clears throat> gives a bit of edge mm -hmm. but 
I wrote it and I, I did the pizzicato on the left hand, dun, 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 dun. And then it's like, well, this is just sounding like one of those pizzicato things. Um, so I got the clarinet, bass clarinet on it. There's a buzz that that, that sound design is okay, like. Okay, okay. But I wanted it to have a bit more menace, so I put a contrabassoon underneath it. And I think there's a single Glock hit. Yeah, just before on the offbeat. Yeah, and do you know what it is? There's a mad, like, it's heavy metal before heavy metal was invented <laughs> tune called Hit It and Quit It on Maggot Brain by Funk- Funkadelic. Nice. And they do this thing of just putting a bell, a, like a, a, a glockenspiel. They've got this repeated pattern and they just put a glockenspiel on one note. And that's where that... So I'm just talking about all of these. These are just little tricks mm-hmm. that I've picked up over the years. But the conglomeration of that is something that possibly is, is quite original. But when I'm making it, I'm going, Poirot drone, fresh meat. <laughs> The reason I use bass clarinet is because of Steve Reich. Um, the bell is is uh, maggot brain, and the contrabassoon is just is a scary comedic thing. So was this what you were saying about something that for you feels mediocre? Yeah, but for like, for everyone else is like this is. Yeah, I think one of the difficulties we have is musicianship and being a composer is that it's not only surprising yourself, it's impressing yourself. Mm. And it's like same old key, same old notes, same old sounds. But I've captured the spirit of it. Mm. And 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 people kind of, it's laying out the stall. And that is not clever compositionally. It's not clever from a production point of view um, because it's it's just these, these tools that, you know, just grabbing ingredients that mm-hmm. I've been using. Um, but I'm telling the story they want to tell. Yeah. Um, so that is the first and most fundamental thing to do. And I think that then thereafter, you know, those little surprises will come. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but a, a really good thing for writer's block is um, the muse. It's just to literally mm. have someone in the room who is not talking to you, but just someone in the room as you write. It's It works tremendously well, mainly because you're not sitting there watching YouTube. <laughs> you're, you're like, I have to look like I'm got, yeah, serious here. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. God, this must... Be, and also like, oh, this must be infuriating for that person to mm. listen to the same thing going over and over again. But it's just get the stuff in there and then work work with it and you will stumble across stuff. I've, I've been working with a, a showrunner. He's older than me and he's like, he's just done everything. And what he often refers to is a deck of cards. So what what you're not doing is you're not you're not looking for new, different, interesting playing cards. You just want as many in your hand as possible. Mm. And he just says, you know, experience is just having more cards to play. And so for me, one of the big big things that has changed for me over the last ten years has been the ability to deal with revisions. I love it when they come in because they're like puzzles. Mm. And it gives you an opportunity to go back in, listen to stuff again, make it feel better. But that is all to do with cards. That's all to do with your tricks. Yeah. When Okay, so how are we going to do that? Okay, reverse symbol out of that because they recut that and this, mm-hmm. that and the other. Um, so that's that I think is is important. The other thing that... Um, you know, if you're if you're struggling, is is to find someone to collaborate with. Mm. You know, to yeah, invite huge. an instrumentalist in, and 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 and, it, and it, that's a different kind of support. But that's something I would also look at. Just the reason why I will never ever have writer's block is is because I make sounds, and anyone can make sounds. Mm. And it's it's similar to John Lennon playing an instrument that you don't know how to play, but. You know what I'll often do at the beginning of a of a a major film or, or game or or TV series, I'll often do a substantial sampling session. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't. You know, it's not like um, you know orchestras and stuff, but yeah. you know you can. It's micro composing. You can do mm. phrases because they're yours. Yeah, and they're your samples. No one else is going to use them on anything else. I've got my phone is just full of voice memos. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, you know, I've got a piano in the house and I play it for at least an hour nice. every day. And I, every day I'll just put a little idea down. Mm-hmm. And if I'm really, really stuck, particularly if it's maybe something thematic, I want to find a nice theme that's special. 
I'll often go through those and went, oh my God, you've thought about that's that. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 And little kind of sonic ideas, if you get distracted, it's it's really, don't don't fully go into it, but yet do just do a save as and put it into your, your ideas folder. Mm. And then I think with these strategies, it's impossible to have uh, writer's block. But the one thing that absolutely, I 100% promise you, if you just make a sound, there's just no way that you're not going to be inspired by it. Mm. I think that's really important the way you said it is not making this pressure to make the masterpiece. It's making this sound that you like. Yeah. And whatever goes into that sound to make it sound good doesn't matter. It's. I think sometimes we're obsessed with what the recipe is and we're not obsessed with the actual food at the end. Yes, I totally agree. Um, I think that if if you've got a problem with something and you're adding then um the problem is worse than you think i think mm. i think the the solution should always be subtraction it's kind of like when you're mixing right yeah. it's like you always take away those frequencies instead of adding on top yeah. of it, cause it adds business. but it's the same it's like if if you're if you're just layering more and more stuff on <laughs> to, to sort out a problem it's like you're just I don't know. I always say it's like putting on a lipstick on a baby. It's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing weird about it, but it's just inherently wrong. It's almost like what Andy Gray was saying when he was like, "It's making as much emotion or conveying as much emotion as possible with as yeah. few notes." Yeah. And it's like, it's the complete opposite to what you're normally taught, right? Normally, everyone's like, "Just go full gung ho, yeah. make it," you know, notes after notes after notes, no. and it's actually just taking a more simple approach to it absolutely and and that i honestly you know i think is one of uh, that's i think one of the best best pieces of advice is mm. is to see how much you can reduce it to um and it still be good and still be really yeah. really good and yeah and here's a here's a story you know i was working with harry gregson williams he wanted me to have a look at a queue um and i just split up with a girlfriend so i was i, I was like emotionally all over the place and um, so I wrote this cue that was really complex for this major, major Hollywood film. And uh, I say writer, I kind of did a mock-up and stuff, mm -hmm. produced it. Um, and I sent it to Harry that night without resting on it. Woke up the next day, it was the worst thing I'd ever heard. <laughs> so I wrote him an email going, Harry, can I just have another shot at it? Yeah. Um, and just as I sent it, my inbox pinged. And it was Harry going, it's great. Wow. And I'm like, oh, now I put him off it. <laughs> and, and then the director fell in love with it and just said, can we put that stuff all over the, the film? Wow. Like the DVD menus has got all of the... And it's like literally, <laughs> it's all of my tricks. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's just... You, that's why Harry came to me, like my tricks. It's can again, you, as you said, like what you may believe to be mediocre... Yeah. Yeah. It's like different horses for different courses, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's not always going to stimulate you. Um, but mm. but then you'll do something, go, oh, hang on. Yeah. Or learn something. Um, so I think that, that that's important. Mm -hmm. There's a few things that I've, you know, from a psychological point of view that I've discovered. Um, maximum amount of productivity for a human being in any given, a given day at a stretch is three and a half hours. In one block or throughout the day? You can split it up but you, you're not going to make for longer than three and a half hours. Don't, I mean, this is like, this. there's peer-led studies. Mm -hmm. Like, this This is fact. Okay. Um, there's lots of other stuff you can do in a day, but talking about productivity. Um, so I limit myself to four hours a day composing as wow. opposed to the 18 hours a day I used to do. Or rather, the 18 hours a day I used to sit in <laughs> in my studio going, oh. Existential like, dread. Like, like, oh, see if Anthony Bourdain's on, you know. And um, so I would say limit yourself to shorter working uh, product productivity hours mm -hmm. treat it as treasure it's precious so if you waste that time that, those four hours are so valuable mm. if you waste that time that's a shame and then i think my last kind of favorite gambit is to go and um and i think that this is something you should everyone should do is i think that w what we need to do is you talk about recipes and, and, and ingredients and, and or these cards that we're playing. Mm -hmm. I think ingredients is a better analogy because I think it's really good to go to places to find unusual yeah. ingredients, saffron and, yeah. you know, you know yeah, your, your, yeah. your smoked paprika and stuff. <laughs> um, Lachinatas. Yeah, exactly. So, 
get, step out of your comfort zone and just go and see a concert at the festival hall mm. or or whatever. And for me, often it might be just it. it Often it'll be a decision that a composer has made that I would never make. I'll never forget one of the best pieces of music I've ever written. I was in the Lincoln Center um, and I was watching Sibelius 3, I think it was. Okay. It was a terrible concert. It was really kind of flat and and, and, and the Lincoln Center in New York is, is sounds awful. But there was this, this one chord change and I was like, whoa. Now, I didn't nick it, but I just analyze the chord change when oh that's interesting you're doing that to that Mm -hmm. and then if i go that to that and that to that and then this this just this thing exploded the thing is it's it's you expressing yourself um and if you if you don't look after yourself it's it's going to become more and more difficult Mm -hmm. you know the number of of insanely talented people who who cut their lives short you know because they didn't look after themselves yeah i think um yeah yeah there's so so for me it, it's so it's true. not it's not it's not just about what you do whilst you're writing and, and and working it's about what you do in between mm. you know i think it's it's fair to say that sometimes we have these huge crunches and we work too hard um but it's fine it's just like you just got to think of yourself as a bit of an athlete and it's all about you know, recovery it's funny i was just about to mention that is like my cousin plays football and his relaxation time he takes it so seriously oh, gotcha. like i can't even talk about the football when when he's like having an off season or whatever, he's like, "Look, I don't want to know about it." Is yeah. yeah, he ruined his career. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it, like done. So I think it's really important that we we don't blow ourselves out as well. And therefore, I think it's it's you know it, it's good when you do have a bit of a break, um, to have a break and to get away, mm. and it doesn't have to be somewhere fancy. Get up into the Highlands, yeah, you know, whatever, um, and just kind of nourish your soul to be honest Mm -hmm. you know i I really really believe that and 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 i also believe all of these ingredients all of these cards that we've got are are what i refer to as a a personal heritage and you can just enrich that and even though if you and i were to list like our top 10 favorite albums even if they were identical albums they wouldn't be in the same order Mm -hmm. and then even if um I said to you, oh, both of our number ones are, I don't know, Donny Hathaway, what's going on? Um, it wouldn't be the same song that would be your favourite. And even if it was the same song, it would be a different bar yeah, different or a different drum fill. <laughs> yeah. So we, what we do is we take and absorb all of these different ingredients, different elements of them. And that becomes part of your heritage. And that becomes the stuff that you rely on. Poirot's drone, fresh meat, pizzicatos, bass clarinet from um, uh, Music for 18 Musicians and a bell from Maggot Brain by Funkadelic. <laughs> you know, this is going to sound so embarrassing. This is going to sound very <laughs> fanboy, but I actually have like samples of Poro myself that I've just ripped and I've just used that to start songs. I've just been like, okay, that saxophone, I don't know what's going on, or this clarinet, I don't know what's going on. It's just one note drone and I'm going yeah. to nick that and then next thing you know you've got like this whole section or yeah. this whole new beat that you don't know where it's come from yeah I, I think it's 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 something to do with the muse i think that introducing mm-hmm. something foreign something alien a decision that someone else has made mm-hmm. someone else's ingredient is a way of forcing that surprise yeah that thing that we started with that spark that thing that isn't you that stimulates you moves you forward mm-hmm. i don't know why we need that but we do but don't worry if it doesn't always come. Just do something, mm. even if it's shit. <laughs> As someone who's recently suffered from writer's block, I would love to hear in the comments what you guys do to get out of this creative rut. And I will try my very best to read and reply to all of your comments. I'm sure you've heard Christian say already, we are a new startup. So please, please, please show some love for the video with a like, a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. These three things that you can do really help sustain this channel so that we can keep doing all the fun stuff we're doing.